Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we have another gun gripe episode for you. We are going to be talking about a subject that is probably a little bit sensitive of a subject considering probably where, you know, at least maybe not Chad so much, but where I've been in the past, you know, I've worked at malls and I've, I've worked gun counters before and I know, you know, how it is to sell guns and how to, you know, be behind a counter and be a gun salesman and everything. But we're going to do a gun gripe today about gun salesmen, but we're not throwing anybody under the bus or anything like that. We're certainly not. But we're going to be discussing a few instances that we've had in terms of negative experiences with gun salesmen. And the whole point of this video, what I think I really want to try to accomplish here, is that maybe if somebody falls into any of these categories that's watching and maybe they work in retail and they sell guns for a living, mm -hmm. they can maybe fix a few of their minor mistakes and maybe improve their overall knowledge base uh, as, mm -hmm. a, as a salesman. The um, biggest thing is education. I mean, in the big yeah. scheme of things, it's like, you know, just educate yourself on what's new, what's not. I mean, some people look for old guns and you just need to kind of read up on things and it's just frustrating. Sometimes you go to the shop, you're looking for something specific and they don't have a clue what you're talking about. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean, we well, know it, a, a good example is you start looking at things like uh, odd things like 32. Okay, you know whether somebody's got 32 a Smith and Wesson or a 38 Smith and Wesson or a 38 uh, Special, a 38 Long or a 32 Short. There's all these different obscure revolver cartridges that you have to have a little bit of knowledge about. I mean, if a person brings in a gun and wants to know what cartridge it shoots, you got to have a little bit of a knowledge base to kind of explain mm -hmm. what's safe and, and what they can and can't do. Uh, there's so many instances that it's almost impossible to know them all, but there are different sides to that coin in terms of gun salesmen, and some of them try to be confident, and they act confident, and they speak confidently when they're you know having a discussion with you, but they might actually really not know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they could send somebody out the door with some ammo that will literally blow their gun up. Yeah, or like a guy bringing in a 4570 trap door mm -hmm. and then saying, yeah, here's some buffalo bore, <laughs> uh, 4570 <laughs> ammo. That's a 350 grain cast pill moving at some butt naked speeds. And, and when you shoot that trap door, it's going to blow it mm -hmm. up, you know. So there's a lot of little things like that. It, you know, being a, a salesman, uh, it's a knowledge base. It doesn't matter if you're selling cars, if you're selling guns, if you're selling uh, anything. Whatever you are selling, if you're a salesman, part of your job is to be knowledgeable about the product so that when a potential customer asks you a question about something or needs some, some help in the knowledge area, you're there to meet their needs and to make sure that they have uh, what they need mm -hmm. um, in, in the transaction, no matter what it may be. The gun industry, in my opinion, is a, is a very, very different world in terms of uh, that type of knowledge base because if someone is coming in and let's say they're asking for advice on a carry handgun, mm -hmm. well, if you give them crappy advice, that could cost them their life. It could. I mean, the biggest thing, like, you know, all, all we know is, as salespeople, I mean, I worked in malls for, with Eric for, uh, a few days a week for about a year after I left Home Depot. And, um, you know, it, it is a different world. Working in retail for 12 years, you know, at Home Depot, it, you know, you, you learn things and you learn how to deal with people on, on a regular basis and how to interact with customers and such. But it's all about, like I said, you know, Eric said, the knowledge. Okay, if somebody needs uh, information on like how to build a deck or something like that, well, guess what? I mean, I've, I've built one before, so I can give that information. If I don't know it, then I'm going to seek out that information. I'm going to find somebody who knows. And uh, you know, while while we were at malls, if I didn't know something, my go-to guy was Ray. Right, because Ray is a walking encyclopedia of gun knowledge, yep. and you know he's a, a pretty much a master gunsmith in many many um, facets of, of the business. And um, you know, it, it's just if there was something I needed to know and I didn't, I went to Ray. I found somebody who knew, you know, uh, what I was looking for, or you know, had the knowledge for whatever question I needed answered, where I'd find somebody to help. I wouldn't just give a customer ill advice. But uh, I could give them my personal opinion on whatever gun that I personally carried. Sure. You know, whether it be a Glock 19 or a Glock 43 or, you know, well, I don't really like the shield too much, but there's other guys who like the shield. I mean, that kind of stuff. People look for those kind of comparative things. Part of being things. able to offer an opinion on something is also there, there's kind of an art to having a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. And there's an art to meeting someone's needs in a customer service situation. And let's yeah. face it, some people just aren't customer service people, and I get that. And not shoving stuff down their throat. But it, it, it is frustrating to go into a shop and not know about something and then have somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about try to give you advice. I mean, imagine being a new shooter or a new gun owner and then going into a place and getting you know bad advice and then getting a bad taste in your mouth because somebody told you that, 
the ideal handgun for you to get is a 500 Magnum with a four inch barrel. And then you went out and said, uh, shooting guns is not that fun, actually. Like, I, you know, and maybe they got some bad advice. So there are instances like that. And, and sometimes you see a, a bit of an issue in the technical side. Like, let's say a guy's coming in, he's trying to look at reloading components mm -hmm. or something like that. And I've seen and heard so many just crazy <laughs> stories about people getting really bad advice at gun shops. Oh, man. I mean, imagine a guy telling you, oh, yeah, yeah, um, you use this powder to load 357 Magnum, and then you take his advice and maybe not research or follow up on the data properly, and you just go by what he said, and then all of a sudden you've got a 357 Magnum in pieces because mm -hmm. you got some crappy advice about hand loading from somebody who took a... Uh, you know, a 15-minute familiarization class before we step down on the sales floor. Yeah. I mean, you know, on, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, we are customers as well in a lot of cases. I mean, we travel around. we got all sorts of little local shops. And if we're in a different state and we have some free time, you better believe that we're going to be finding some little local gun shop. We're on our phones going, gun stores. Yeah. So like, oh, there's one on our throat. Let's go. Let's all go check time. it out. I mean, all the time. And, you know, we, we know quite a bit about guns. We don't know everything there is to know about them, but... You know, if we go into a shop and we're looking around and they ask us if we need some help, or whatever, it's like, oh, well, not right now, just looking around. Uh, that's fine. You know, well, come and get me if you need something. And you go and ask them a question about something, you know, you'd see a gun and then it's like, okay, I, I want to see the, the Astra down there on the bottom. Like, this one? No. This one? No. This one? No. This one? No. This one? Yeah, no. that's frustrating. It's like, no, no, no. It's. The Astra Even if right you there. don't know about every gun that there is, you should at least make an effort to know what's in your counter. I mean, and, and we're all guilty of that. Sometimes inventory, if it's a high volume gun shop, inventory can change quickly. And mm -hmm. sometimes you, there might have been a gun that came in while you were out of work and then it sold before you even came back. You didn't even know it was there. Yep. So, and, and a lot of that also, imagine if a, let's just say a customer calls or something and there's a guy on a phone call that you're trying to really give some advice to or some information about a gun you have, you got to know how to properly describe things you to do. people. I mean, if a, if a guy's asking a question about what threaded handguns you have in stock, then you need to know that most 9mm are probably half by 28, but you need to know if the gun's half by 28 or not. It, Unless it, it's European. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, you know, if, if a guy's calling up to get some technical information, you got to be able to relay that technical information in a, in a professional manner mm -hmm. that makes it sound like you know half of what you're talking about. And the, the problem, and we're going to kind of double back to an issue that is definitely out there and this is something that is, is is an issue. You look at the internet and you look at how easy it is for somebody uh, to go to an online retailer. I'm not going to mm -hmm. say who they may be, but let's just say an on online retailer of some sort. A lot there's a lot of misconception about how guns online are purchased and people don't realize no, you don't buy the gun and have it shipped straight to your door. It doesn't work like that. It goes through an FFL. It's no different than buying a gun face to face at an FFL from a dealer. It's just that you're initiating a transfer from another party who then sends it in and then they do the transfer for you and the gun is already sold before it arrives to the FFL. That's minute. really the only Wait main difference. You, you mean you can't buy a gun online without a background check? All right, but here's, here's where it kind of relates to this gripe though is that uh, so many folks now can just pick up a phone and research things on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, they may not necessarily need your help when you go into mm -hmm. a place. Uh, if you're a gun salesman and some guy's looking at something, he might have already went and watched every Hickok video, every Iraq veteran video, every military arms channel video, every YouTube video he could possibly find. He's already gleaned every bit of information. He's already read every single article, and he's probably already developed a little bit of an opinion. He might even know that he wants to buy it before he even went in there. He's just looking for verification. All he's looking yeah. for is verification, mm -hmm. and you might be that, that final step that he wants to pull the trigger to, to, to buy that gun that he's looking at or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a fine line there of you being able to deliver the goods there. And folks, you know, information is much more readily available now than it was 20, 30 years mm -hmm. ago. So it, it is. And another you know, big thing. A, a lot of the things that we're talking about go back to a gripe that Eric and Barry did a long time ago called gun store etiquette. You know, not mm -hmm. only on the, the other side of the counter, but also behind the counter as well. You know, how employees should treat their customers of, of gun shop and then how customers should come in and actually interact with those their employees, you know. And the biggest thing, if you educate yourself, make sure it's from reliable sources. 
you know, not some forum post that people are getting in arguments about that's like 30 or 40 pages long over some trivial thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, biggest thing is just, you know, go in there with a little bit of knowledge about what, what you're looking for and, uh, you know, hopefully you'll get somebody who knows what the difference is between <laughs> small pistol primers and 22 long rifle primers, which <laughs> don't It's exist. not even a thing. <laughs> right. I went into a shop recently and I was just oh looking around God. for ammo. And it's just a place that I normally stop at if, if I'm traveling a certain area. And I just drop in and I'm looking around, looking at the guns. And it's like, okay, yeah, that price has gone back up again. This price has gone back up again. They still got that same stuff hanging on the wall that's been here for five years or whatever. And I'm looking for ammo and I found some 35, um, 35 Remington ammo for pretty cheap. So I picked up five boxes of that just to add to my brass collection. And uh, there was one or two boxes of CCI number 500s, which are small pistol primers. And I said, excuse me, sir, uh, do y'all carry any other reloading equipment or supplies or you just have those primers up there? It's like, no, we just got them 22 primers. What? Like tw 22? At that point, you should just walk <laughs> away. I mean. 22 primers. Well, he didn't answer my question. That was the thing. It was like, not really. It was like 22 primers. I, I said, I'm, I'm not following you. Those are small pistol primers. Oh, yeah, those are for 22s. No, sir, I'm sorry, but they're not. I said, I don't know who told you that, but that, that's wrong. Yeah. So those are for like 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, small pistol center fire cartridges. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he just finally, like, he was arguing with me a little bit. And I said, sir, I said, I'm sure you could probably find somebody else in the store who could confirm what I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you that those are small pistol primers. There's no such thing as a 22 long rifle primer. I mean, that you can just go out and buy. Like a football bat. <laughs> I mean, Look at that football bat. <laughs> it's like, dude. And finally he said, man, I didn't know that. I said, well, I was trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it was, it's a little frustrating sometimes. You know, and, like I said before, there, there's an art to having a conversation. I believe that, that it is definitely an art form. And it, and it is a, yeah, it's probably my phone making racket. Turn the but, thing down. But there is, there is an art form to having a conversation <laughs> and for making sure that the other party in the conversation uh, you know, has what they need out of the conversation. So if you're not knowledgeable, then maybe you should become knowledgeable. Or if there's a guy who's trying to explain something to you and he's trying to help you, he's trying to make you more knowledgeable about something. Hey, I was looking for this gun. Uh, it's the um, Ruger Precision Rifle, but it's the Gen 2. Do you have any of the Gen 2s in stock? Gen 2s? Gen 2s? You mean there was a Gen 1 or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so knowing... knowing Things like that can can really matter, and, and you can't be a walking encyclopedia no, of knowledge God. all the time. But but you can help people seek out the information they need, and you can put them in a position where they can get the answer they need, and that in turn makes you helpful. It's all about being helpful. I yeah. mean, and there is a, a kind of a two way street to the entire thing. There's there's a way to go into a shop as a customer and and get a good positive experience out of it. I mean. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a customer go in and, and give the guy at the counter a hard time just because he doesn't understand how to conduct himself in a polite fashion. And, and there is an art to getting your way with people and getting mm -hmm. things that you need out of people. And it's definitely not, hey, uh, you, you know, all right, you're at, you're at a gun counter. There's a gun, gun salesman across the counter mm -hmm. from you. And me walking up and going, uh, excuse me, can I, uh, I need to ask about this right here. Like, after, you know, that crap gets I, old. Dude, I can't tell you how many times we're up at malls and I'm interacting with a customer and, you know, I'm answering questions, whatever, and just some guy just walks up and says, hey, I need to see this gun on the counter. I've yeah, been yeah. waiting. And they just butt in line I'm like, or, it, you know, it, uh, and, interrupt your conversation. And, you know, you know? It, if... You know, if you're in the right position, it's okay to say, well, excuse me, sir, well, I was helping this gentleman here. I said, I'm sure that somebody will be with you in just one moment, or I will help you in just a moment as soon as I'm finished with this customer. And honestly, like what I did when I used to work in retail, you know, if you're dealing with a customer and, and they're at the counter with you or something like that, you know, all right, I'm, I'm talking to a customer right now. A guy walks up, sir, it'd be just a moment. Uh, let me finish up with him. I'll be with you in just a second, all right? Just give me a few minutes here. I'll, I'll, I'll be right with you. The biggest thing is acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. them. Just acknowledge that they're there and... And I think most people, that's all they want is to just be acknowledged. You, you know, know? We, I, I pulled my phone out, turned the volume down a minute ago, and it just made, made me think, you know, we're, we're talking about how, how there's so much stuff out there that's new with guns all the time, it seems. It, it, it almost mimics like the, the 
new advancements in technology all the time. Like there's yeah. always a new smartphone out. There's always yeah. new computers that are coming out yeah, every a single scope month. or a gadget yeah, it's or just, some other crap. There, there's so many freaking guns and optics and accessories and all manner of stuff coming out, which is awesome because it means that there's a huge market for firearms now and people are really interested in guns. A lot of choices and for the yeah, consumer as well. Exactly. There's there's not like big monopolies like there kind of used to be. Sure. There's so many people in the market now, but it, it almost gets over overwhelming because there's so much to choose from. If you're just Joe Blow consumer, you don't really know. And the guy across the counter probably doesn't know about the brand new gadget that was just announced yesterday because he went home from work and ate supper and went to sleep and said, oh, I got to get up and do this crap again tomorrow. Yep. Oh, God. Increasing that <laughs> knowledge base is tough, you know. I mean, Another good, good way to look at it is a lot of times when you go into a gun shop, you know, if it's a mom and pop gun shop or if it's a, if it's a big box gun shop, it's 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 totally okay to say, hey, um, I'm I'm really wanting to ask some questions about military rifles. Do you have a guy here who is knowledgeable in military rifles? It's mm -hmm. okay to ask that. Now, some people might take offense to it, or some people may go, well, I know everything there is to know about military rifles. But every shop you go in, chances are, chances are, there's going to be there, Eric. There's there's going to there's going to be the tactical <laughs> Ted of the group who can tell you every single thing about every nut and bolt on an AR or some crap like that. There's going to be a Milserp nut who can tell you what year something was made and, well, maybe, you know, what year something was made and, and whether or not this is a good gun or that's a good everything. gun or whatever. So you're, you're probably going to have your Milserp nut, your tactical Ted. Then you might have your foot of the group who he doesn't care nothing about nothing but F-class, bench rest shooting, hunting, and shotguns and shooting skeet. I don't but even, I don't if even that's know what the that knowledge is. space that you need to tap into and you need to know about, there's probably somebody there that can help you. So enlist the help of fellow employees. If you work at a gun shop and there's people there that you know that guy's the go-to guy for that, it's okay to defer that question to somebody who has a better knowledge base because it's ultimately all about making sure the consumer gets what he needs. And if a guy is coming in and he's asking about hand loading for a uh, 1886 uh, Steyr Kropacek, then there's probably a chance that if you're Tactical Ted, you're not going to know about that. But the unless, but you, the unless Tactical Ted hangs out with him all the time. Well, you know. you know. But the thing is, there there are knowledge bases that can be expanded mm -hmm. amongst you and your peers if you uh, work at a gun shop. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is, it's a knowledge thing, but it's also an etiquette thing, I think is, is one of the biggest things. And the reason we want to make this video and why I felt it was important to make it is because there are so many new firearms owners, there's first time firearms owners, and guys, look, if you're watching this video and you work behind the counter of a gun shop, you have to realize that you are the first person that that, that guy, that new gun owner, is gonna be in contact with, and Work the out. way you conduct yourself could, could mean whether or not they're going to be a gun owner an hour from the time that conversation, uh, you know, came about. Especially women, because I can't tell you how many women came into malls looking for their first gun, and it was it was yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know, this oh, was it's awesome. This was over a year ago, and it's even more so now. There's just so many women shooters out there, and yep. you know they can, you know, I mean anybody can easily get like dispersed from you know, guns by one bad encounter. It can just yep. put a bad taste in their mouth and say, uh, no, 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 no. But, you know, on, on kind of a different tangent, you know, going into gun shops and the, the employees not really knowing much about some guns it is beneficial in some cases. You know, I, I can't tell you, I mean, how many experiences I've had where I've gone into a local shop or even just one I've been traveling through and I find a gun and I'm like, I, I pretty much know relatively what guns should be valued at, what should what I should pay for them, what I want to pay for them. And a lot of that I got from him because he's just like this military surplus guru and, you know, just talking to Ray and, you know, like, hey, Ray, I've got this gun here I was looking at. I mean, what should I what should I pay for it? He's like, well, I wouldn't do more than such and such. And some stuff I've, I've walked out of shops for and be like, la, 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 la. You know, you get out to your truck and you're like, I can't believe I just got this deal. I mean... It's just crazy, you know. It, it, but they it's don't. It's a two-way really, street, guys. They don't really know. But then you got the shops that you go in, and they're like, "No, I can't take less than seven hundred dollars for that thing." I'm like, dude, that thing's only worth five hundred bucks. I can't take less than seven for it. Well, then it's he's like, selling well, it. Then it's not leaving the shelf, most likely. But here's the thing, though. I guarantee you, some schmo eventually will walk in and pay that for it. Probably. So it. it it's one of those things. Like, well, I, I don't know. It's. <laughs> If, all right, if you work in a gun shop and you see a guy on his cell phone walking around, chances are 
He's is on Gunbroker. He's, he's either looking on Gunbroker, trying to find a cheaper price, or Who's to make sure your somebody. price is in line with what most people on Gunbroker are asking. Yeah. Or two, he's texting somebody who, a buddy of his that's knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a Chad or Eric or somebody that he can call up and say, hey, uh, I'm looking at such and such. Is that a good deal? And then they can go, yeah, I'd probably do that. They're seeking verification for something in terms of price, mm -hmm. availability, or condition. Uh, they're, believe me, if they're on a phone, it's not mm -hmm. that they're trying to be rude. They're probably trying to validate the mm -hmm. decision they're about to make. That's yep. all. You know, and, so. um, yeah, we... We went to uh, a local shop uh, when John Patton was in town, and uh, you know I found a good price on 22 ammo. I was like, "Wow, okay, I haven't seen that in forever." So I, I picked up a bunch of 22 ammo. And the thing is, you got to go into shops if you're looking for certain things or whatever, or just stuff that you look for all the time. Like if I go anywhere, if they got 22 ammo, I'm leaving with it. Yeah. You know, I don't leave with it all. I'm not going to be that guy. But I'll leave with a couple thousand rounds, maybe three thousand rounds sometimes, depending on the price. But I found a good price on 22 ammo, and you got to mm. know what's good and what's not. Yep. It, so. it, it's almost, it's in a way, it's almost like kind of playing the stock market to some degree. Like, guys that get in the stock market, do you think for one second that they're going to buy high and sell low? Well, no. They're going to find the deals and go, wow, that's a great deal on that stock, and they're going to snatch it up and then hang on to it for a while and maybe flip it or whatever they're going to do with it. But gu the gun culture and buying and selling gun-related items is very much the same way. Uh, because you might go to a place and like I have no intention of buying 22 ammo, but I see the deal and I see the the value in what I'm seeing there. Then then you may buy it just to <laughs> just to have a little bit or to speculate on it. But it depends, you know. Unlike Chad, I mean, in some cases, if I see a lot of 22 ammo, if I don't need any, I generally won't buy it. But if I go into a place and the price is too good to be true, well, then yeah, any any reasonable person would probably buy the ammunition for a certain price. But I, I suppose the vein that 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 runs into is the fact that when you're in a gun shop and you're looking around as a consumer, you need to kind of keep your head on a swivel and really kind of think uh, with an open mind as to what you're looking at and to be able to kind of see those deals when they're out there and then snatch them up. I mean, there are awesome deals out there to be had if you look hard enough. And if you work in a gun shop, getting back to the gun salesman on the <laughs> other side of the counter. We've kind of gotten off on a little bit of a tangent. We've gotten off on a little bit of a tangent, but that's okay. Uh, I think it's a good discussion, but when you look at the guys on the other end of the counter that are selling stuff, it's also your job to be able to tell someone, hey, we've got a really awesome deal going on these right now. Maybe you should check it out. Um, it's probably not what I would want per se, but it may work for you. Let me show you one. It's a great deal. you, you got to kind of sell what you got to some degree too. So th there are two different sides of the coin, and I think that there's, you know, to kind of close things out. Oh, well, got uh, one more thing to talk about too. Oh, well, run it. Big boxes. Oh, big box you, you stores. You mentioned big boxes just a little bit, but yeah. all right. So you all right? Working at Home Depot, okay. You know, you any of you guys who've worked in like big box retail before, no matter what it is, guns, home improvement, whatever, okay. Walmart. You, you know anything? Yeah. You know you have like product knowledge classes and stuff like that. Like literally, okay. If you're going to work in all right, say you're going to work in the hardware department and you're a new employee, you're like fresh off the street, okay. They're going to put you down behind a computer and you're going to take like two or three days of product knowledge training and you're going to learn about basic products that are in hardware. It's not going to teach you everything you need to know about using those products. It's going to teach you, you know, just a general knowledge. Okay? Well, they do the same thing with folks at gun shop or at big box stores. Like, okay, so you go into a big box store and they've got a wall of guns, thousands of guns in stock on the back wall and there's like three little employees walking walking around. And I've talked to some of these guys and I'm like what? You got to be kidding me. I'm thinking to myself, God, you must have just gotten three hours of computer training and that's yeah. it. And and that's it. They don't expand on those horizons at all. That's the issue that I have. Yeah, yeah. Is they don't go home and just research things themselves. Like if somebody asks them a question that they don't know about during the day, well, take a note of it. Pull your smartphone out, make a note, and say, I'm going to look that up when I get home so the next guy that asked me about that, I can be a better employee. But you know, I don't speak for everybody, but you know, you got some folks out there that are just trying to scrape you know, by. <laughs> scrape by. They do the bare minimum at their job, and I saw it at Depot. I mean, folks would do the bare minimum. I, oh, that ain't my job. I don't need to know that. I'm not going home and taking the, taking my work home. And well, guess what? That's how you move ahead in life. Right. You know, and that's, you know the guy in the gun section that goes, "Oh well, I'm a gun I'm a gun salesman. I don't need to know about reloading equipment. I've gotten that before from yeah. people. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I don't know, know anything about. Reloading I don't know equipment. anything about that. We don't have anybody here right now that can help you. 
and they walk away, and that, ooh, that pisses me off. Yeah, I know. Well, you oh. know, and then, and then I guess on another end of that vein, so to speak, would be that uh, you look at other big box shops like, uh, I am going to mention Bass Pro here because I, th I think it's this is important to mention. It seems like some big box stores like Bass Pro, got good people there. it's almost like they hire people that they know are FUDs to some degree. Like I've gone in there and I've asked like, hey, uh, do you guys carry Daniel Defense AR-15s? What do you need AR-15 for? Excuse oh, no, me? those people. <laughs> Excuse me? What are you? What? I'm oh, thinking well, what about... do you need an AR-15 for? That's not what I asked you, dude. I want to know if you carry Daniel Defense. You know, Daniel Defense. Awesome ARs, right? Oh, uh, huh? No? Uh, well, we don't have nothing like that here. Well, what, what, how are you to say, like, whether or not I should own something based solely on why, whether or not you have it? I mean, I get it. A salesman needs to, to sell what he's got, right? Like, if you're a salesman, what do you sell? You sell what you have to sell. If you don't carry Daniel Defense, well, then guess what? Oh, Daniel Defense isn't the greatest gun that, that there is. Well, because we don't have it. Come on. It, there is a fine line there between you should be able to identify that guy when he comes into your shop or comes into where you're working. If you're behind the gun counter, you're behind that. Then you should know. You should be able to identify that person and go, all right, this guy knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. He's not full of crap. He's not an idiot. I should just tell him we don't have it and just grin and, and say, mm -hmm. here, here's where they have it. You, you can't BS people that much. Well, you can't bring your personal opinions about whatever products you're selling. I mean, you may not agree that the company sells AR-15s or whatever, but you, you know what? You might want to find a different job. If I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. but you work for that company. They sell AR-15s, so that means you sell AR-15s. That's right. You know, you, you leave your personal grudges and all that at home, and yeah. you be professional about that it. That irks but, me big time. But, like, you know, we, we've been to Bass Pro before, and I've been down there, and I've gotten in conversations for an hour with people behind the counter about reloading equipment and, like, mill serps and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, you know, there's some folks that are <laughs> just, they just happen to, you know, be really passionate about firearms like we are, and, you know, they're, you just easy people to, they're just easy people to talk to. Well, so. this this video could go on for a long time. I'm going to give one more little story before right, we close this out. So one, one more little very quick story is, I can't tell you how many times that I've been in a big box sporting goods store that carries reloading equipment mm -hmm. and oh. been perusing the reloading equipment and have someone else, a customer, walk up to me and, and start asking me a bunch of questions because they can't get any help at the big box shop. I know. So, you know, <laughs> I, here I am looking at powders, <laughs> you know, looking at like, Things like lot numbers on the powder, because I might be buying like more than one uh, pound of powder, and I want to make sure all the lot numbers match. And have some guy go, "Hey, uh, what powder should I use for a 300 Win Mag? And uh, what <laughs> like, bullet, what bullet weights does a 300 Win Mag uh, uh, supposed to shoot? I mean, can I run 120s? Can I run a 220? I mean, what should I use? And then you start getting all these questions, and before you know it, you didn't sp spent 45 minutes of your time. I mean, because, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I'm going to try to tell somebody what they need to know if they're looking to me for knowledge, right? But you, before you know it, you're working for Bass Pro and you don't realize it. <laughs> well, not even that. You know. I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that's literally what's happening. Like, you are g spending your time to help somebody that Bass Pro should be able to help. You know, it makes me think of, like, a, a couple of, a couple of th quick things. Like, we were, at, we were at shot one year and we were wearing Geisley shirts and hanging over by the guys at the booth and we started getting all kinds of questions about triggers and they're like, oh, well, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you work for guys? Like, nope. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, I mean, and that comes down, that comes down to being passionate and loving what you do. And ultimately, I think, to close this video out, uh, like we mentioned, there's an art to a conversation. There's an art to getting what you want in life. And there's also, I believe, an art behind being passionate about what you do in life. Uh, if you love guns and you want to work behind a gun counter and sell guns, then do it. Get knowledgeable. Learn about them. Own them. Do what I've, you can. Like, be that guy. If you want to be that knowledgeable guy and you love selling guns for a living, then be that guy. Mm -hmm. Don't don't half do anything. I, I know that you know we've gotten a ton of questions through email, on Facebook. I get a ton of questions all the time on Instagram from folks. It's like, what's the best way to get into the gun business? You know, and John Patton over the Gun Collective has answered this a million times. But mm -hmm. go work in a gun store and mm -hmm. hang out with gunsmiths, real gunsmiths, yeah. not the type that put together ARs. Be and, a gun guy. You know, but yeah, like, that's the thing. Be a gun guy. You want to work in the gun business? Hang know? out and seek knowledge from folks who have been in the gun business for a long time. If there's an old timer that works at a local shop or whatever, go up there and hang out and it's slow. Just soak it up. You know, but if you want to work in the gun industry or whatever, go. Yeah. Get started. You know, well, whatever. Here's another thing, that, and we'll close this out. You keep saying that. I, I know that, but, <laughs> but this is important to mention, I believe. Okay, so, you know, a lot of times when a gun shop, especially a mom and pop gun shop, hires somebody, 
it's generally somebody who hangs out in there all the time and they're a well-known customer. A lot of times you're generally going to be a well-known customer and a well-known mm -hmm. kind of gun store fly, yeah. so to speak, <laughs> uh, before you even start working for them. And they're like, hey, this guy's in here soaking up knowledge all the time. He's hanging out. He knows the gunsmiths well. Mm -hmm. He's doing his thing. He's a likable guy. He helps customers out when they're in here. And he doesn't even work for us. That's his story at Moss. That's I mean, how I got so. hired. So it, anyway, that's... For what it's worth, there's our opinion on that. Hopefully, uh, you know, we weren't trying to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that. I mean, we certainly appreciate anybody that works in the gun industry because it takes an entire team of people to get that gun from the point where it's raw materials to being manufactured, to being distributed, to being put into a sales floor, from being a 4473 filled out, you taking it home and you're the proud new owner of a gun. Guys, there is a humongous process and a huge chain of people that that gun has to go through from the time it's manufactured to the time it ends up in your living room. You know, and guys, we appreciate anybody mm -hmm. that works in the firearms industry. Well, and I only wanted this to be constructive yeah. type thing. And we've seen, th it, this video has gone off on a little bit of a tangent from it's what okay. we started with, but you know, we have seen like the inner workings of some of the distributorships and whatnot around the country. And like we recently went to the new Brownells retail store. So like if you order something from Brownells, we've met all the people that handle that product, getting it to your door, and it is just incredible seeing how you know firearms are manufactured, put through distributorships, and then put out through all these gun shops. And I tell you, I mean, to be honest with you, since I've been working in the gun industry, this is, in my opinion, one of the best industries to be in. I mean, everybody we meet is always just top notch, and, yep. well, except for a very few select you know folks. But very few. Ninety nine point nine percent of people in this industry are just awesome folks, down to earth. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Including you if you're watching yeah. this and you're a salesman. So yeah. don't think we're trying to throw anybody under the bus. This and is we meant to be constructive. And we want to hear stories from gun salesmen, you guys who work behind the counter. You know, tell us some of the crazy stories about customers. And then customers, tell us some of the crazy stories about gun yeah. shops. Let's get, a dialogue. Kind of Let's get a dialogue going. We want to hear everybody's <laughs> stories. And maybe we'll revisit this video at a future date and, uh, and include some of your stories yeah. uh, in our video. So... Thank you for watching today's Gun Gripe. I know it was a little bit long, but we enjoy making them, and we they love it when are. we can kind of get a little bit. Yeah, they're always, they, they're always long, but we always like when we can get a bit of a conversation going and really kind of chomp at the bits of the given subject. So uh, there's gun salesmen in a nutshell, at least what we think about how gun salesmen are perceived. Uh, thank you for watching today's video. We appreciate it. We have many more on the way. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Later. See ya. Bye.